Is it worth upgrading from a Gen 2 Tesla wall connector to a Gen 3 Tesla wall connector? Well, that's what we're gonna be answering in today's video. We're here at a job where I installed this three years ago. We're gonna be ripping this out and putting in the new Gen 3 Tesla wheel connector. And we're gonna be sharing with you in depth all the pros and cons of upgrading. What are the differences between the two? So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you do, make sure you like and subscribe and let's get into it. So this is the install that I did three long years ago. This was actually the first ever Tesla wall connector that I installed. And I'll leave a link up here where you can watch the original installation video because I did film this one back in the day when I used to film everything on my phone. It's a little bit rough and ready, but you'll see the difference in how far things have come with Tesla chargers and with our channel in general. This is not your typical domestic install because actually it's a three phase installation. Our customer here, very lucky has a three-phase supply to their property so he said well why don't I get the full shebang and get a three-phase Tesla wall connector install but actually the Tesla wall connector itself is the same whether you do single phase or three phase and that is the same with the new gen 3 as well essentially with this one we've got a three-phase circuit running from the distribution board a three-phase type B RCD and I'll explain why it needs that in a minute big chunky cable it's I think a 10 mil five core cable because it is quite a long cable route I remember having to get floorboards up and it was quite a complicated run through and into this charger we also fitted an earth electrode and earth rod in the driveway there because this doesn't have pen fault protection in so either needs a pen fault protection device or an earth electrode for the charging point only so I'll quickly show you the earth pit because actually I'm quite curious as to how well it's aged and whether it's still in good condition or not and then we're gonna get the gen 3 paired up to the Wi-Fi already because that is a little bit of an issue that we've been having with them. You might see my previous video where I said that the Tesla Gen 3 wall connector is the worst EV charging point ever. Well, there's a reason because Wi-Fi connectivity can be a challenge on that. So we'll try and get that bit out of the way. So like eat your veg first, you know, and then eat your desserts afterwards. The dessert is actually putting it up on the wall. I feel like Indiana Jones uncovering this old earth pit that I installed. Perfect, so lots of cobwebs in there, but uh, that looks pretty decent to me. The connection to this copper rod is as solid as ever. Looks like we've got a good earth connection there still, which we can use for the new charging point. So that's great. We will do a test reading on it later and I'll show you how we do a test on earth electrodes. But for the moment, we'll pop that back and we'll get the Gen 3 unboxed. So what I'm doing here is literally just putting it on a plug top and then we can liven it up temporarily in order to do the Wi-Fi setup on this because it has been known to be a bit of a nightmare. And we've got this portable power station that we use, which is obviously not enough power to actually, you know, to charge a car, but it's enough to power up this unit and then just get it paired to the Wi-Fi. So this is one of the unique features about the new Gen 3 Tesla wall connector is that it does have Wi-Fi connectivity. And you can see when you power it on, it creates its own Wi-Fi network here, which we can click on, connect to. Okay, so now we've got the Wi-Fi. What I can do is type in the IP address and then click search. And we then go into Wi-Fi and we connect it to the customer's Wi-Fi network. So after a little bit of faffing around as usual with these lovely charging points, we managed to get it connected to the Wi-Fi. You know, it only took 10 or 15 minutes. Could have been a lot worse. It's done now. The firmware is up to date on it. So we're confident that when we put it on the wall, it will pair to the customer's Wi-Fi again. Now is the fun part. We're gonna rip the old one off the wall and we're gonna put this new one on and we're gonna talk about what are the differences. Now, before we take the cover off this, we've got to do something regarding safety, which is 
turn the power off. Nobody wants a crispy electrician lying on their driveway. So I'm gonna isolate this back at the mains, but there are other electricians working on site today because they've been doing a solar install here. So I'm gonna use my lockout kit today to make sure that nobody else turns the power off while I'm working on the system. Okay, so we are surrounded by other electricians who don't want to be, to be revealed on camera, but we have locked out and tagged out, so we're now safe to work. So I'm just about to take the cover off this, but the first thing that really stands out, which is different between these two charging points, is this cable. This tethered cable on the Gen 2 is huge and thick and heavy. I think I mentioned it in the original install. It is uh, not the easiest cable to work with. The new one's much thinner, and I'll explain why in a bit. Now the, this, oh, oh, it always feels like you're gonna break it when you take these off, because they just pop off. And the only thing that holds them on is that little star screw at the bottom. But it is what it is, you just got to pull until it pops off, and it is always a little bit scary. So this is the Barco Stubby Screwdriver. I did do a Tools for Sparks review on this, and this is my tool of the day today. I've not used it in a while, but it's so handy because it's a ratcheting screwdriver. So it just makes removing screws in stuff like this really, really quick and easy. So I'll leave a link below where you can get that and a link to the Tools for Sparks video that I did sort of an in-depth review on it. So I'm happy to see that the IP rating of this charging point has not been compromised. It's um, been in for three years but not a drop of water has got into it, so that means I installed it well in the first place. One thing I do love about the new Tesla wall connector is how much more space they give you for the connections. This one was just so tight, especially when you're doing a three phase installation. They give you hardly any space at all. Whereas the new one, you will see, there is enough space to swing several cats. You may have noticed that I left an exceptionally long loop of cable below this charging point, which I didn't need to do. I could foresee today happening one day, and that's the thing. Time ebbs by, things change, technology changes, people want stuff to be swapped over. So I always like to plan my installs with the thought of, if somebody comes back here in a few years time to change something, how can I make their life easier? And in this case, I made my own life easier. So behind our charging point, we have some flora and fauna that have built up. I will try and clean this up for our customer because I'm presuming he's gonna stick it on eBay for some VW ID3 Tesla wannabe owner to buy <laughs> and uh, then uh, you know it'll at least get used again because things like this should not be thrown in a bin we should reduce reuse and recycle <laughs> question is will the screws line up <laughs> it doesn't look like they will actually if I, if I offer up the two back plates together I mean the back plates line up pretty well but actually the screw holes don't line up at all definitely getting too old to be on the tools now uh, what else do I need when you go back to the van 10 times in one day, you know that you've had a lack of preparation. So when you get to the van, think, what am I going to need next? So I've got things to mark the holes. I've got screws, plugs. I've got a level now. I think I've got everything, but undoubtedly I've forgotten something. Brain fog after three o'clock. A few moments later. I knew I'd forgotten something. Ear defenders. It's almost as much of a Swiss cheese wall as mine. It's the same bricks as my house. I hate these bricks. They're, they're the most rubbish bricks that were ever fabricated in the history of brick fabrication. They just crumble when you look at them. It's like you just got to cast your eye over them and go, I'm going to drill you. And they're like, Ugh. the mortar in between them just 
like is so rubbish it just crumbles everywhere i think my house is sort of like holding on by a thread at the moment from having drilled six holes in it because the brickwork is so bad anyway brick rant over just because i need more exercise let's say we've got some new followers from the local um, school now who've seen the van watch us on youtube and they've seen the cameraman and they're like oh i want to be in a youtube video as always, this job is not as simple as it looked. You know, customers, they think, oh, you just, you know, take the old one off, put the new one on. No worries. But there's so much you need to think about, like the difference in regulations and safety devices since the original one was installed. But now I've hit a real snag, which is that the Gen 3 does not have a cable entry for an earth cable for the earth electrode. So I am now faced with a conundrum and I would love to know what you would do in the comments below. My ideal is always to take the cable in below the charger because if you take it in the top, inevitably water can run down the cable and go in. Now obviously we'd be fitting a compression gland, it's going to be tightly sealed around the cable so it's, it's unlikely but in principle I prefer to always go in underneath than on top. However, the issue we've got is there are no separate cable entries below apart from the main one. So if I take this in the bottom, then I cannot take the earth electrode in. Oh, wait. I may have just, I may have just answered my own question here. There is a small gap down in this corner. Now I think that's a drainage hole. What I'm now wondering is, is there a little bit where you can drill out at the bottom and get an earth cable in there just next to this i'm tempted to try you know what if you don't ask you don't know so i'm going to check the instructions and see what it says very slow very poor signal one million hours later <laughs> i'm gonna fall asleep like this when's elon musk gonna start rolling out the um the old uh, starlink connection i could really do with it right now It'd probably be quicker for me to cycle over to Elon Musk and ask him personally. Hello, is that Elon? Oh, hi. Thanks for the tweets, by the way. Always entertaining. Um, just wondering if you know whether we can take an earth wire in the bottom of the Gen 3 wall connector. Stop laughing. Everyone does that when I say, can I take something in the bottom of a charger? It's designed for an American system. And you don't use earth rods in America. What do you mean you don't know what pen fault protection is? You're Elon Musk, you know everything. <sighs> okay, he just hung up on me. Apparently he doesn't and they've not designed them to take an earth rod in the bottom because... <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> it's just not funny. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to assume that we can't do it because this is never going to load and I need, I've got to, you know, I've got to get this job done. <laughs> Right, so we, we've come to the consensus. Elon has responded and said that there is a way to do this without being a complete cowboy. You can use the drain hole. So that's what we've decided. The customer agrees. That will work. Decided I'm fed up with my own incompetence. Every time I do a video lately, I look like a complete idiot. So I'm gonna tidy up my workspace, make myself look like a professional, and then start filming again. Now, how much do you reckon the customer's gonna get for this on eBay when he sells it? I'd like to know your thoughts in the comments below. And that takes us to one of the comparison points between these two, which is the price. I've bought both in the past, and I can tell you that they both cost exactly the same amount. So they're 460 pounds, including VAT. Obviously they don't sell these anymore. They only sell the new ones, but the price was the same. You just get a, an upgrade essentially. So I finally got the cable actually terminated into the enclosure. And now the easy part really connecting the wires in. As it's a three phase, we've got L1, and L2, and L3. So gray is L3. The neutral is, is the blue. And they do give you lots of space in here, which is what I really like compared to the old one. As you 
saw it was pretty tight for space. L2 uh, is black. Just tuck a little bit of slack and then shorten that slightly. So in case you're wondering what the difference is between three phase and single phase, three phase, it basically enables you to have the potential to charge up three times faster, as opposed to single phase charging point in the UK runs at seven kilowatts. A three phase charger can run at 22 kilowatts. Now, it all depends on the actual onboard charger of the vehicle. So the Tesla Model 3 will only actually charge at a maximum of 11 kilowatts anyway so that's like 16 amps per phase it's not going to really make that much difference between 7 and 11 if you have a, a three-phase charger but you know makes a little bit of a difference some versions of the model s and x i believe have a 22 kilowatt onboard charger which means that they can use the full 22 kilowatts of charge from a three-phase charging point which is great so some of you eagle-eyed viewers might notice I'm leaving this earth wire disconnected. This is the supply earth from the house. So it's connected in the consumer unit. It's protecting this cable, but I'm not connecting it into the charging point. And that's because the charging point needs to be connected to the TT earth, which is the earth electrode that we've put in. And that's basically just so that if somebody's standing on the ground and they're touching the car, the car and the ground are on the same earth potential. There's no possible potential difference because you don't want someone to touch the car and get an electric shock. So that's sort of in layman's terms why we put an earth electrode in. So all my connections are done now. I've just got to screw this cable back to the wall and then we can pop the cover on and I'll show you something clever about this because this funny little square box is quite a clever little device. So this is the bit when all the magic happens. These four pins in the back here actually go into that little socket there and that's why there is no cabling between the back plate and the front plate because these pins provide the connection between the two and then there's a little pin down here which does the earth connection that goes into that little slot there and so all five conductors are making contact with the front plate without any additional wiring and that just pushes on and it fits nice and snug and then we just got to sit, sit those four screws to secure the cover on. Now in the little bag where the screws come, there is a mysterious cable tie. And I doubt if Tesla are including cable ties for no reason, so let me know in the comments what this cable tie is for. So now that that's all mounted, we can wrap the cable around and it wraps around in a very similar way to the Gen 2 wall connector. And some people have commented, I'm not sure who, that they think it looks like a bit of a mess, to be honest, the way it just, you know, hangs around the charger. But, you know, there are worse looking chargers, there are better looking chargers. It is what it is at the end of the day, it's all down to taste. That holsters into the side like that which is, I think, exactly the same as the previous generation. And, you know, it doesn't look, doesn't look too bad. Now, I said to you earlier that I would tell you why this cable is thinner than the previous generation Tesla wall connector. And if you put them side by side, you'll see what I mean. It's the new Gen 3, the plug is smaller, the cable is much smaller. The plug is much bigger on the Gen 2 and the cable much thicker. And that's because, oh, I can barely lift it. Let me put the old Gen 2 down before I drop it. The reason this new cable is so much thinner is because it's designed for a newer generation of vehicle. The old Model X and Model S in the USA could charge at 80 amps single phase. So that's why that big thick cable was needed in certain situations but now those are sort of the older generation of vehicle this is designed to work with the newer generation of vehicle like the model 3 and the newer versions of the model s and x which charge at a lower rate when it comes to ac charging in the usa this can charge at a maximum of 48 amps on single phase in the uk we don't allow that so it's maximum 32 amps single phase or 32 amps per phase in a three phase installation, which this is. So this can do seven kilowatt single phase or 22 kilowatt three phase. And this cable is nice and flexible. It's a lot thinner, easier to work with. If you look at the actual writing on the cable, it's a six millimeter squared conductor inside it. So it's a five core six mil cable. And if we look at the old one, I think, let's have a quick look. Okay, so it actually says it's a six core six mil. 
and it's got 5 times 0 0.5 in it as well. So it's got more kind of communications in it, it seems, but it's also got six power cores, which is kind of bizarre. I don't really understand why that might be. Let me know in the comments. But either way, that is a much thicker and heavier cable, more difficult to lift and work with and plug into your car. So that is one advantage to the new Gen 3. So I've removed my padlock and the power is back on. Managed to avoid getting electrocuted by another electrician, which is always a bonus. Now let's do some tests and talk about the features of this Gen 3 charger. We have power. So we've done an earth loop impedance test at this to see what the resistance of our earth electrode is and the earthing system that we've installed. It's 41 ohms, which is very decent. So I'm happy with that. Now we're going to do the internal RCD testing and things. And then we're going to talk about the other things that are missing from this charging point. So now the big question is, should you upgrade from the Gen 2 to the Gen 3? Let's do a quick summary of the differences between these two Tesla wall connectors. First of all, features. What is the difference? Well, the difference is this has Wi-Fi connectivity, but actually it doesn't really do much at the moment. It's not gonna appear in your Tesla app. It's literally just so that it can do a firmware update. Now, whether Tesla will eventually incorporate it into the Tesla app so that you can see it alongside your vehicle and your power wall and your Tesla solar roof and all that, maybe. But at the moment, there's no guarantees and it's already been out for two years. So Wi-Fi, okay, it's there, but it's not really a benefit <laughs> as such. Other features, it does have power sharing, but the old one had that too. It does have the nice smaller cable, so there is a benefit to that. But all in all, in terms of features really, there's not a lot that's different from the Gen 3 compared to the Gen 2. So what about installation requirements? Well, this is better from an installation point of view because it does have type A RCD protection and six milliamp DC protection. That means, whereas I installed a very big expensive type B RCD here, because the old one didn't have type A RCD protection. This one does, and therefore you only need a type A RCD upstream if the cable needs that RCD protection. In terms of things that it doesn't have, it doesn't have pen fault protection, which you will need if you're on a TNCS or a TNS earthing system at your property, which most properties are. So you'll either need a pen fault protection device upstream or an earth electrode like we've got here. Other things that are great about this from an installation point of view, I think it is easier to install apart from the lack of a really easy way to put an earth wire in. It is more roomy inside. The back plate is nice. There's a lot less faffing around. So as an installer, I'd give it a big thumbs up for ease of install compared to the previous generation. So what about price? Well, this was 460 pounds. This is 460 pounds. So they're exactly the same price. Aesthetics wise, what do you think? I would love to know all your thoughts in the comments. Personally, I think this looks a little bit like an alien and it looked kind of cool and quirky at the time. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't mind the look of it. I thought it was pretty cool. This looks even nicer in my opinion, but probably a bit more mainstream, a little bit more feminine, dare I say, and just aesthetically more pleasing. I love the sort of iPod-esque feel to the front of it. I'm still not totally sold on the way the cable wraps around, but it's not a game changer. In terms of speed, this charging point is exactly the same speed as the previous one. If you're in America, you can only charge at 48 amps on this one versus 80 amps with the previous one. So if you do have an older generation Model X or something that could charge at a ridiculous 80 amps single phase, then you might want to stick with the old one. But for us UK people, 32 amps single phase is maximum we're going to get. 32 amps across three phases also. So a seven or 22 kilowatt charge. Model three, you're gonna charge at 11 kilowatts max if you've got a three phase system or seven kilowatts on a single phase. What about availability? Well, these were like hen's teeth a little while ago. They were very difficult to get hold of, but I do believe that they're fairly plentiful again on the Tesla website. These are going to be relegated to places like eBay and other dark corners of the internet if you want to get hold of one of these. So this will be appearing on eBay at some point very soon in the near future when our customer puts it on there. But they are available, not too difficult to get hold of. It's pouring with rain and the cameraman's getting very wet. So we'll make this our final question. Should I upgrade? If it was me personally, would I do it? Would I swap from the Gen 2 to the Gen 3? Um, 
I probably would because it's me and I'm an electrician and it's fairly easy for me to do. But it, if it was a case of buying the new charger and paying someone to come out and fit it, I probably wouldn't because there are no real benefits to having this other than you've got the latest Tesla charger. That's it really. In terms of functionality, there are no current benefits. Maybe if they roll something interesting out in the future, then it would be worth it. But right now, if it was me, I'd probably stick with the old one or get something that's a little bit more smart and has an app connectivity like the Hypervolt maybe or the Zappi if I've got solar. So those are all my thoughts. I'd love to hear all of yours in the comments below. And if you have enjoyed today's video, it really helps when you like and subscribe. We do loads of videos about EV charging, solar, battery storage, general life of an electrician stuff as well. And we'd love to have you on board as subscribers. But either way, thank you for watching and have a great day. It's not funny. <laughs> How do you say it without it being rude? <laughs>